This lecture is all about the motion of the planets. We'll learn why the planets appear to move the way they do and why their motions were so mysterious to ancient astronomers. There are five planets we can see with the naked eye, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Mercury is the most difficult of these five to see. Because it is the innermost planet, it never strays far from the sun. Venus is a bit easier. If you see something that looks like a bright star in the east just before sunrise and in the west just after sunset, it's probably Venus. Mars is distinctly red in color, although it can be confused with reddish colored stars. Both Jupiter and Saturn can be quite bright, but it's useful to know where to look to find them. The planets don't twinkle like stars, so that can also help. This figure illustrates why you can't see Mercury and Venus in the middle of the night. Mercury and Venus are the innermost planets, so they never stray far from the sun. If you are watching this video during the day, Mercury and Venus are in the sky right now, but you can't see them. The sun is just too bright. Right after sunset, though, the sky is dark enough, and if these planets are east of the sun, they will set later. If the planets are west of the sun, they will rise before the sun, and you'll have a chance to see them before the sun's glare makes them invisible. If you watch the planets over time, you'll see them appear to move through the constellations. This planetary motion was hard for ancient astronomers to explain since they thought the Earth to be the center of the solar system. Over the course of a single evening, nothing strange goes on with the planets. Jupiter or Saturn, for example, will appear to rise in the east and set in the west. But if you continue to watch the planets night after night, you will notice something odd. Instead of moving steadily eastward relative to the stars like the sun and the moon, the planets vary in speed, brightness, and direction. Sometimes the planets even appear to move backward through the sky. This backward motion is called apparent retrograde motion, and as you can imagine, this was a difficult motion for ancient people who believed in an Earth-centered system to explain. Retrograde motion can be explained in a sun-centered system. The inner planets orbit the sun more quickly than the outer planets. As Earth passes Mars, for example, it appears to move backward in the sky. It's not really changing direction. It only appears to. This image shows a composite of 29 individual photos of Mars taken at 5 to 8 day intervals. You can see the retrograde loop from June to November. If the apparent retrograde motion of the planets is so easily explained by recognizing that Earth orbits the Sun, then why didn't the ancients adopt the Sun-centered system? Believe it or not, the idea for a sun-centered solar system was proposed as early as 260 BC by the Greek astronomer Aristarchus, but his idea never took hold. The main reason was the inability of the Greeks to observe stellar parallax. Parallax is the apparent change of position of an object due to a change in position of the observer. For example, hold out a pen or your finger at arm's length. Now alternate closing your left and right eyes. What happens to the pen? It appears to move relative to the wall behind it. This is parallax. Now imagine that your two eyes represent Earth at opposite sides of its orbit around the sun and that the tip of your finger represents a relatively nearby star. We can see the position of the nearby star change relative to the more distant stars over the course of six months. At least we could if we had a telescope. Without one, you can't see the effect. The ancient Greeks didn't have telescopes, so they couldn't see stellar parallax. The Greeks knew that the lack of observable parallax could mean one of two things. Either the stars are so far away that stellar parallax can't be seen with the naked eye, or Earth does not orbit the sun at all. It is actually the center of the universe. With rare exceptions, such as Aristarchus, the Greeks rejected the correct explanation. 
they could not imagine a universe that was so large you could not observe stellar parallax. This is exciting. The stage was set for the long historical showdown between Earth-centered and Sun-centered systems. This does it for Module 2. Nice work. Take a break. Get a latte. Do something for yourself. You certainly deserve it.